Hello everyone. I'm Julie, your virtual professor in CC 102 from the College of Information and Communications Technology CICT, of Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology. Our lesson for today in Computer Programming Intermediate is, Loops. The content of this video covers the following, 1. Learning Objectives, 2. Definition of Loops or Repetition Structure, 3. Elements of Looping, 4. Increment and Decrement Operators, 5. Infinite Loop and Empty Loop, 6. Create simple programs using the concept of decrement and increment operators, the infinite loop and the empty loop. For our learning objectives, at the end of this topic, you will be able to 1. Identify the loop or repetition structure. 2. Identify the different elements of the loop. 3. Differentiate the increment and decrement operators. 4. The concept of infinite and empty loop. 5. Create simple C++ program on how increment and decrement, infinite and empty loop works. When writing C++ codes, there are times that you need to do a statement or a block of statements a certain number of times. What you have to do is to type the statement or block of statements repeatedly as to the number of times you want it or them to be executed. For example, you are asked to display your name and age on the screen five times. It is okay if the specific number of times is less than 10, but how about, a hundred times? Or a thousand times? In C++, it can provide a structure which will help you do repetitive tasks, it is called the repetition structure or looping or iteration. There are three important elements of loop. The first element is Loop Control Variable, LCV. The loop control variable will hold the value that will be compared to the limit of the loop. The limit sets when the loop will end. The loop control variable should be first initialized before it can be used in the program. The second element is sentinel value. It is the value where the loop control variable will be compared to. This value is set to decide if the loop will continue, or stop, based on the result of the comparison. The result is, always a boolean value, that is, true, or a false. The last element is loop update. Inside the loop, the value of the loop control variable must be altered. It is called the loop update. You can change the value by incrementing, which means adding one to a variable or decrementing, which means subtracting one to a variable. The increment operator, plus plus adds one to its operand, and the decrement operator, subtracts one from its operand. Thus, x equals x plus 1, which is the same as x plus plus. We'll evaluate to 5 if the initial value of x is 4. Similarly, x equals x minus 1 which is the same as x minus minus will evaluate to 10 if the initial value of x is 11. Let's try this example using increment operator. In this example, this program will display the three different value variable x after evaluating the three statements from line 10 to line 14. In line 8, I initialize the value of integer variable x which is equal to 1. Line 9, it will display the following text concept of increment, and move the cursor to the next line. In line 10, which is x equals x plus 1, after evaluating this statement, it will add 1 to the variable x, since the initialized value of variable x is 1, the value of variable x will now become 2. Line 12, the x plus plus, as I was said earlier, x plus plus can be written as x equals x plus 1, meaning the value of variable x will increase by 1, so if the last value of x is 2, after executing this statement the value of x will now become 3. Same with line 14, which plus plus x, since the updated value of x is 3, the final value of x will now become 4. The output would be like this. Now, let us try with a simple program using decrement operator. This program also displays the different value of x after executing the statements. I initialize the value of x which is equal to 5. In line 10, x equals x1, after evaluating this statement, the value of x will become 4, then it will display the value of x. In line 12, this statement will subtract 1 to the value of x, since the last value of x is 4. The updated value of x will become 3. 
In line 14, this statement will also subtract 1 to the value of x. Since the last value of x is 3, the final value of x will now become 2. The output will be like this. Both the increment and decrement operators can either precede, prefix, or follow, postfix. The loop control variable for example, x equals x plus 1, can be written as plus plus x, prefix, or as x plus plus, postfix. When an increment or decrement is used as part of an expression, there is an important difference in using the prefix and postfix forms. If you are using prefix form, the increment or decrement will be done before evaluating the expression and, if you are using postfix form, the increment or decrement will be done after the complete expression is evaluated. Let's have an example program to familiarize the difference between increment and decrement operator. In this sample program, there are two variables, variable A, with an initial value of 20 and variable C. In line number 9, C equals A++, plus plus, the value of A which is 20, will be assigned to variable C, before incrementing by 1. Since this statement uses a postfix increment the value of A will increment after assigning it to C. Therefore the value of C is 20 and the value of A is 21. In line 13, we'll display the value of variable A which is 21. In line 16, increment is used before the variable, so, it is prefix increment. The variable A will increment its value by 1. Therefore the updated value of A is 22 and this value will be assigned to variable C. Thus, the value of C will become 22. Take note, increment and decrement are not only for adding or subtracting 1 from the current value of the loop control variable. They can be any value you wish to add or subtract from the value of the loop control variable. The following are examples of the increment and decrement by other numerals aside from 1. Let's say, x equals 10. Take a look on the table, the first column are the update for variable x and the second column are the current value of x. The first row is x equals x plus 2, the current value of x is 12. Second row is x minus equals 5, 0 or can be written as, x equals x minus 5, the current value of x is 7. Third row is x minus equals 9, the current value of x is negative 2. Fourth row is x plus equals 2, the current value of x will be 0. Fifth row is x plus equals 10, the current value of x will be 10. Sixth row is x minus equals 6, the current value of x will be 4. Seventh row is x equals x 12, the current value of x will be negative 8. Eighth row is x plus equals 7, the current value of x will be negative 1. Ninth row is x minus equals 14. The current value of x will be negative 15 and lastly, the 10th row is, x plus equals 25, the current value of x will be 10. The infinite loop. A loop becomes infinite, if a condition never becomes false. The for loop is traditionally used for this purpose. Since none of the three expressions that form the for loop are required, you can make an endless loop by leaving the conditional expression empty. Like this sample program. When the conditional expression is absent, it is assumed to be true. Note, you can terminate an infinite loop by pressing Ctrl plus C key. The empty loop. There are also loops which will not do anything, it is called the empty loop. This happens when the comparison expression evaluates to false even on the first try. You have to make sure that the comparison expression will evaluate to true at least once. What will be the good of using a loop? If at the first time that you compare the value of the loop control variable to the sentinel value, it evaluates to false. The loop body will not be executed and it will proceed to the statement right after the loop. Let's have an example program for empty loop. The sample program will not display the text after the expression of the for loop, because the program do not satisfy the condition and the expression is false. Only line 10 and line 11 will be displayed on the screen. Since the statement is outside the loop, as you can see on the output. That's all for our today's lesson, I hope you fully understand the topic. If you have questions or clarifications, please do comment on our Google Classroom. I am very excited to see you all in my next video. 
Just remember my name, Julie, your virtual professor. Thank you for watching and keep safe.